Okay, good morning. Uh, I have to do a MacGyver again because the the uh, the jack holder uh, on the other side it fell off, and I don't know if it fell off on the freeway or or what. I can't. I went down the road to see if I can find it, and. And I couldn't find these when I went to Walt's. So, I'm always coming up with a some sort of a solution. So, I went to Ace and I found this from a fence. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, it's a little bit bigger on the ring, but I don't care. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it with a little uh, primer. I'm going to paint it white, obviously. And also, I've been busy buying all these plants that I'm going to plant in my other property. And uh, they've been here for a few days. I just got these flowers in just an hour ago. And that's going to go against the fence. And uh, it's going to look nice. And these, these three, three trees are going in the back. So I've been I've been taking advantage of the truck, the pickup's still with me, and I said you know I gotta use it, and then next week I gotta go with all those plants, and then I'm gonna do the gravel uh, finish. Okay, let me paint this right away here. This is my painting station that I always use on the, uh, uh, all right, let me see, put it up here so the sun can dry it quicker, and then I'll touch it up with some white one. So now I have another small issue, I'm going to see if I can work on this today, to see if I can put this back here, oh look, it, it's on the edge. I want to see it get a crowbar and see if I can pop it out. And uh, another issue is that the the uh, jack it, it it won't turn this way because of this thing is in the way. So if I go forward and say okay, I'll do it in the front, then the ring will not be uh, the pipe is too far out. And it will not go into there. So I have to adjust these uh, things that I have a little screw on the bottom there. Uh, on the bottom here. I'm going to adjust it so it closes a little bit more. And maybe I can do that. Uh, I don't know why it gave me that hassle there. Because on the other side, it's not giving me any issue. Any problems. And the, the other side is free and clear. And basically it's because the anchor is farther away. So the anchor is on the other one. It's here and that's a problem. I couldn't even put these at the same um, distance. So I, I have this uh, 31 inches from the light and 31 inches from the end, but on the other side I couldn't do it because um, I couldn't get any closer uh, because of the, you know, I had to push it further because the anchor is here. And the anchor from the, the, the this is what I'm calling the, the anchor, the, uh, the bracket here. So it's moving. I have to move it that way so it's not even. It doesn't look that that even. So, okay. That's it for now. I'm going to continue. <laughs> I had to wear this Egyptian get Just a t-shirt. <laughs> because I'm, I'm burning over here. Okay, so I fixed this. I popped it back behind. The door closes and locks. And it's like that on both sides. And then I took off the racks and I painted them with plastic paint. And they're here to dry. And the bolts were a little bit rusty, so I'm painting them uh, with primer and then paint. And uh, 
and then I'm going to set it up all together. I, I adjusted the other side. I don't know if that's going to work. This plastic thing is too close to the to the base. So, and I bent these down a little bit more. I just I adjusted this uh, to uh, pull away a little uh, further, and this this is supposed to kind of rest here, and it won't, it won't vibrate. So it's not stretched out that much. I bent this down further. But I don't want the head to be touching the metal and, and banging and making noise. And I think I'm going to put this little piece of wood up here. When I drop it, it's going to sit on that. And then lock it down because it's way too close. And the problem is folding this over this way because of these, this plastic piece. So th this is going to have to be removed and, and stored inside if I decide to... Uh, to take it I, I usually don't I I remove the, uh, the the piece and leave it here because I'm not going to be dropping the cap the camper the shimmy it's still in there I drove it around already a couple of times and it's there uh, I haven't been on the freeway yet because it's uh you know I'm trying to do this stuff and it's 90 something it's like 98 the humidity is high Sweating, but anyways, uh, you know, I get I get the ball rolling with the heat or not. I don't care And the next thing is the electrical that I might do that in the afternoon um, I have to run this wire under the cap over to the engine compartment and attach it to the alternator and uh, See this this on the drive this loosen up That's why you have to take it for a dry run because this thing, I just noticed, it, it loosened up, so I got to tighten it a little bit more, and I don't have a lot of thread left. So, so let me see, where's my screwdriver? Let me check this one here. Yeah, this one loosened up also, because the, the trailer uh, settled, and, uh, and that's what happens. Uh, I think I want to change the anchoring point. And I'm going to put a, a, an O-ring. I already bought one. I think I'm going to put one here so I can attach it. And, you know, I, I'm not too confident. I don't, I, don't, I don't have a lot of confidence on those those little hooks. I'll keep them there, but just drove it uh, to get some gas. And, that, and I went to Ace and then back home and look, they're already loosened. So... Uh, Let's see if I can do this here. Give it a little more. I mean, that's it. Doesn't. I don't think there's any more threads. That's it. Let's see the other side. But yeah, if I didn't check on it, and I was thinking of taking a drive up to the mountain. Uh, to test it to see how it went, but uh, come here. this is the problem. You start bending the stuff and then it'll break on you. So that's it for now. It's, um, it's pretty tight, so I need to drive it on the freeway for a little bit and see what's going on there. And I also painted these with uh, primer. It was a little rusty at the end. So what I'm going to do is once I put the plastic back on, I'm going to paint over with the black and the plastic, and it's not going to paint the truck. So I'm going to let that dry for a good, uh, I don't know, half hour. A little tacky still. That one's already dry, but I'm going to do both at the same time. And the... This one with the primer. Yeah, these are pretty cooked. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it with the paint with the primer right here. Okay, where's the primer? I got my paint station here.
All right, let that dry for a little bit. And I'm gonna sit down and have something cold to drink. Yeah, I'm, I don't have a lot of confidence in that, uh, in that setup. So I went and bought a new, a new uh, loop hook here. And I'm gonna attach it on the inside, drill a hole, put a heavy washer that I bought and I don't see it here. Oh, it's on the envelope. So I'm gonna do that and then, um, and then I'm gonna attach it and then I'm gonna attach the, the, the big buckles, the, the turn buckles. Whew. Let me sit under this here. Uh, oh, <clears throat> for you beer drinkers, I think I'm gonna have one. This is my little, my little fridge stash with water and juices. Um, I'm gonna try this uh, Chanoy, Chamoy Michelada in there's always, uh, there's another one that's mango michelada. I think it's in the, their house, in the, in the house fridge. And I'm, I'm not really a, a beer drinker. I like short drinks, you know, uh, highball or, uh, like I was saying, I'm not really a beer drinker. Uh, I drink a beer with friends when we're having a, a meal, you know. Something, you know, chicken and rice or shrimp or something like that, you know. I'll have a beer, but I'm not the guy that sits and drinks beer. And one beer after the other, like my brother-in-law. That's why I don't have a beer gut. He does. He's got a big gut like this. So, but I found this uh, chamoy michelada. Michelada, it's, uh, it has uh, clamato juice. And I tasted it, and believe it or not, to me it tastes very good. It is very refreshing also. Especially in a, in a day like this. That the humidity is so high. It's, it's uh, 55... Here it's usually 15, maybe 20, but it's 55. And the high desert is 75. I think they're gonna get some rain. Um, in Florida, it's in, it's 100 percent because <coughs> see it has to do a lot with the soil. I'm gonna give you three examples. Florida, it rains. Water goes down a few feet and it's, it stays there because the, the ground in Florida and in, in most of the areas, not all of it, but in most areas, especially on the coast, is coral. So the coral doesn't absorb the water, it kind of holds it. So then the sun is beating on the ground, cooking this water under there, and it's just uh, evaporating and creating this heat, this, this humidity. That's why it's so humid. Now, in Texas, and it doesn't cool at night, then in Texas, we have a relative that lives there, several relatives, and one of them was saying that she, she lives in Dallas. In Dallas, she has to, uh, in the summertime, they, they have a habit of doing this. They go around the house when it's really hot, and they wet around the foundation outside and I'm saying, what the hell is that for? So, so I said, uh, so why? And she said, well, if you don't, the foundation is so hot, the foundation cracks. And I'm going, the foundation under the ground cracks. That, that's how hot it gets. And then at night, oh, and something else, there's um, a friend of mine told me this. I haven't verified it, but there's a... In the building code, there's a rule that says that the uh, front door has to be covered with a little eave or roof or, or an awning or something to cover the handle of the door, the doorknob. If you don't, 
that door knob is going to get so hot that when you go to open your door, you're going to burn your hand. That's how bad, you know. And I don't think it's in the whole Texas state. It, it might be in some particular areas, especially if it's facing south, you know. If that's the type of heat that they have, my house wouldn't be facing south. It would be facing north <laughs> or, or west. But, uh, and then uh, at night, it doesn't cool like here. And I'm saying, well, do you know, they, they, they're only a few hours from the coast. How come they don't have, they don't get that cool breeze? And the reason is that they, the breeze that they get is from the Gulf, which is very warm, very hot. So then here, it's hot during the, the summertime. It's hot, but it's dry heat. And then it cools at night. And that's the advantage. Um, the, the, the people that we had over here from Florida and from Texas, we had dinner and then we sat down outside in the patio and they were having uh, drinks and, and coffee and some people beer. And, and they were sitting there receiving this breeze that comes in in the afternoon. It's already coming in right now. And they were saying, oh, that feels good. I like it here. You know, it feels good. And I said, yeah, because we, we're a little high. We're about 800 feet high here. And the, the uh, breeze comes from the ocean and it cools the uh the temperature you get a nice uh it's it's a warm breeze but it's not a hot breeze so and then at night it cools and then early morning it gets to the point at four o'clock in the morning it gets to the point that it's getting cold but in texas i hear that it gets even hotter at night and i'm saying man that sucks you know i'm going to tell you a little story um the, the reason that I'm drinking this, uh, uh, being that I'm not a beer drinker, I didn't know about this type of, of beer. So I'm in the mountains hunting, and I bump into these uh, crew of Mexican guys. Uh, most of them older than me, but they're, they're tough. They were climbing mountains like a goat. And uh, we're talking, and did you see anything? Oh, yeah, we saw this, and da-da-da, and, you know, that kind of talk. And then they had this huge cooler, but the same one that I have up there for, for the boat, marine cooler. And he, he goes, uh, you want anything to drink? And, and it was hot. And I said, yeah, you know, what, what do you got? He opens it up, and the whole thing was beer. And I said, uh, you know. And I said, ah, well, you know, and, and, and do you have any water or, or a soda? He goes, no, we got beer, but uh, uh, try this one. So he gave me a red can this tall, bigger than this one here. It's like one and a half cans or something, almost two. And I said, what is it? He goes, uh, it's Michelada. I didn't know what that was. And, and he says, it's got uh, Clamaro. I said, oh, okay, I like Clamaro, Clamaro, okay. So I tried it. It was delicious. So, so I said, okay, thanks, you know, and, and I, I said my goodbyes and I drove off and I went off maybe a mile and then I pulled over and and uh, they're, they're coming behind me like maybe a thousand yards. So I pulled over and I stopped and I got in the middle of the road that when they were coming up to me, I come to the middle of the road and I said, halt. You know, like with authority. And I came up to the window and he says, Wow, what's wrong? And I said, You can't pass. He goes, Why not? He goes, Until you give me another Michelin. <laughs> he goes, oh, yeah, no problem. He went back there, gave me another one. And I just sat, I put my chair out there behind the camper, I sit there and looking at the mountains and drinking this beer. And I'm going, Man, this is delicious. So after that, and this is only three years ago, after that, I found out about the Michelin and I've been drinking it. In the summertime, it's it's very good. I like it. It's got that tomato sauce and and usually when I'm drinking, I smoke a cigar, but it's too hot to smoke now. I'm gonna do that later on today. So on the camper, I already see an issue with a leg on the other side that I won't be able to fold it. So the other option that I have is leave it down 
tighten it up, leave it down, big, roll it all the way up, because I think it's got that, that much to go still to come all the way in, and just leave it like that, and dry with the other two uh, up. But if I do that, then I need to take the legs, which are the, the those chicken legs that I open up like this, and that's going to take up more more space. It's going to be more rattling around, more banging in there. And the the legs, uh, they're ten pounds a piece, so it's thirty pounds off the camper. So I'm I'm saving some weight. I don't really need to have it on there. I mentioned this to a, to an older guy that he had a similar trailer, and I said if you remove them, you're going to have uh, thirty pounds lighter. And he said this, he says, i rather have them and don't need them than need them, need them and not have them. And I'm thinking, yeah, he's got a point. So, it's debatable, you know. It's up to now, I haven't really needed to bring it down. The only, the only reason to bring it down with, if you don't have no problems, no mechanical problems or no issues with the camper... The only advantage to bring him down and put the legs is to raise it up a hair and get, and get the weight off the truck and then you have a solid and it's not going to be bouncing with the tires. Um, with, the, with the old blue, I never had that issue. You know, there's, there's barely any movement because that thing is solid in there. So, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We have to test it. But, um... Still not happy with the with the little hook uh, thing. Um, I'm gonna have to do another type of anchoring down to to really you know because I just dove around for a little bit and, and they were loose. Both of them were loose. The other one was the other one was solid. So I think I'm gonna put one uh, on this side. I already have one on the other side. I'm going to put one on this side and, and really cinch it down. So I got to get on this side, they're the cabinet. So I'm going to see where, you know, where am I going to be able to do that? Hook it solid. All right, I'm going to keep going with the project. My uh, woman's going to bring me a burger in and out. And then after I take this break, we'll continue with the project later. All right, so I uh, put everything back. I painted everything. The plastic really needed a painting, so it looks a lot better. That's kind of faded, and put the little back, the little lock back on it. The uh, camper landed uh, perfect. Now the doors can swing open nice. This one is still. Uh, it's a little hard to close. And I think it's because this bent uh, frame right here, so I have to hammer that in. And that's also behind the knot there, so it's nice and straight. And this here is also, I put it back together, I'm looking good, tight. And now the leg, it, there's no way I can bring that over this way or that way. I can't fold it one way or the other, so it's going to stay like that. And it's pretty high off the side, but if I'm going to go into rocky terrain, I will have to remove it, and uh, that's some that's something that I'm going to uh, think about. Uh, like I said before, I don't think I'm going to go into very gnarly uh, trails, so I'm going to stay like that for now. I can drive it down the street. So now I'm um, installing a solenoid. I just finished installing a solenoid. I got to run the wires that I already ran from the camper all the way to, and they're roughly to here. So I got to find some more wires, splice it and bring it up and connect it to the solenoid in this uh, location. So I'm going to see if I can run the wires through the back here, around here, connect it and then run one that's going to feed the solenoid from the uh, alternator and that alternator looks pretty huh let's see if I can either that or, or connect it to the battery but it should be it should be from the alternator 
that at the end looked pretty sealed. So, two o'clock is hot as hell. <laughs> ah, I took a break, had a burger, and had my soda. And um, let's keep going. I'm gonna wash up later. Go to see a movie. Go to see that that uh, Maverick Top Gun. I saw the very first one. It was an awesome movie. Oh, and I'm pooped. So there was a guy that called me yesterday and said he want to come down and see the pickup, the blue old blue. At one o'clock. Well, he stood me up. I have plans to go to the boat because I got things to do and I got things to take. And the a-hole didn't call me. And I called and left him a message. He said, hey, you said you were going to come. You know, let me know what's up. I haven't heard from him. So that's how people are. They just leave you hanging. Uh, I'm sure he's going to have an excuse. All right. Let me keep going. Later. Okay, so I already spliced the wire for the solenoid and ran it through the under the engine and up and I just made a small bundle and, and tucked it in there I'm not going to connect it because it's very hot and that's it I'm taking a break uh, in fact I'm going to get a glass of water and just lay in bed for a while I'm going to go see a movie so I want to be rested uh, so I'm done with everything except all oh, the buckle I'm going to attach the uh, the uh, the big buckles then I want to get this thing ready but it's always one, one thing or another okay alright I'll put you right here so you can watch watch the show Put some grease on this thread. But for now, solid here, solid here, and then bring this, this up. And that's not very sturdy. So I'm going to do the same on the other side because I don't trust those little turnbuckles. Okay, that's done. And uh, this came out pretty good. The tire uh, holder. It's a good addition. Okay. Ah, man, I'm... Whew. Hot, hot. All right. I will do another drive and test these uh, turnbuckles to see if they're going to soften up on me again because uh, I don't trust them. They don't have a way of tightening the, there's no, there's no nut uh, lock, uh, lock nut, I mean, and to, to hold it in place. So that's it for now. I'm going to hit the sack for a little bit. Later.